Let's go, let's, let's go, let's, all right, people want to hate every day, it's okay. All right, welcome back, Reckless Success. Tonight we got my buddy Nathaniel White on. He's the owner of Clearview Tree Service out of DeSoto, Illinois. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Nathan, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having or, us. I call him Nathan. His name's Nathaniel, but it's just easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hard time throwing in them extra syllables. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Nathaniel owns Clearview Tree Service. We met actually on the job. I think you knew my wife from college or something like that. And she told me that there was a tree guy that needed some excavating or an excavator to help him. So I was like, yeah. So we went out, we met you. We, we done a cemetery job and you took down some big old trees. It's a big, big red oak tree. Yeah. And then how long had you been doing it when I met you? Probably, you know, kind of doing it real with insurance and paying, you know, paying benefits. Probably just a couple of years right. at that point. I still didn't have, because I didn't even have a tractor at that point. That's why right. I needed you. I didn't have right. any way of moving really large material. You were picking it up by hand. I was. big ones. And, and we couldn't do it on that tree. Right. That was a big tree. It was. I remember when I met him, he had an impressive crew. He had a couple guys that were real good, hard workers, and, you know, had, because, Tree work's dangerous any way you look at it. Somebody's got to go up in there, especially because you climb. Yep. You don't have to climb as much anymore, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But when I first met Nathaniel, day one, he's going up this big, what was it, a red oak? Yep. Big, massive red oak. And he's just shimmies up it, you know, <laughs> like it's nothing. And he's up there like walking on limbs. And I'm watching him, and I'm like, holy cow, there's – like I would be so scared. I'm afraid of heights. Yeah. So I have a hard time. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not afraid of heights. That kind of goes away get... pretty quick. Yeah. But, um, that was a big tree. That was a big tree. That was that uh, was that. Some of people say that was there before the storm, twenty three. Right. So it rode it out. Well, I know at that point when I first met him, that I was impressed because <clears throat> just as a small company, it was him and a couple guys, and like you said, he didn't have a tractor yet. He. He could climb trees. He had nice chainsaws, but I could tell he was investing in his company just by like your helmets and your headsets. Yep. Like those weren't cheap. No. Um, they ha they all have helmets, you know, for a uh, hard hat basically that clips, but they've got like, what are they? The muffs? Were they're, they muffs? Yeah, they're muffs and they have Bluetooth communication in them. Yeah. And sound deafening. And, they were cool. Yes. Like Bluetooth to where you could just talk to each other. Or I can't remember if I would push a button to no, everybody talk or everybody, everybody just, could just everybody talk. Everybody can just talk to each other. Right. Yeah. See, my guys, that wouldn't work with because we all get <laughs> mad at each other. That's what I told you that day. I said, me and my guys, I'd say something to my guys like, hey, can you do this? And they'd be like, motherfucking, <laughs> think you're fucking. <laughs> well, there was some of that. Yeah. We tried to be able to let some of the uh, children or homeowners wear our spare set. Right. And, so you try to keep it yeah. PG. And it, it's tough. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Maybe I could try that but yeah. like again we get radios and yeah it goes to shit quick oh yeah people are fighting and yeah. <laughs> cussing yeah. and quitting oh, yeah it happens <laughs> yeah everybody's quitting and going home and fighting <laughs> i'm like what, what happened here yeah. where did this don't come let them from? communicate yeah <laughs> just let them yell hand signals and stuff as they <laughs> yeah. pass each other <laughs> i could tell right then that you know i knew that he headsets weren't cheap i'm sure they were thousands of dollars and your chainsaws were all nice thousands of dollars and then since then you know i i spotted your name at that point you weren't on my radar just because you were a different company and then since then i watched him grow and we became friends and boy have you grown yeah. i mean yep we have he's um, got the coolest freaking <laughs> truck i have ever seen <laughs> we took we've taken some leaps yes um, but you know at the end of the day it's what's what i love doing mm -hmm. and i feel like you know if you're going to invest in something why not invest in yourself right. and i feel like that truck is going to help me not be so broke down when i get you know at retirement age and that's important to me that's i want to be point. able to you know enjoy it so I'd let them, you know, mechanics do it. And That's a real good point because, yeah. you know, tree work's hard work. Just like any laborious work that you do, by the time you do it for 20 years, something's going to be, you know, back thrown out or yeah. hips hurt or something like that. So the truck that we're talking about is like a big, what what brand of a truck? It's is a Peter? Finger crane on a Peterbilt semi-chassis. Yes. And 
we'll throw the picture up right here, and it looks amazing. Yep, it's got a hundred and five foot of boom, and uh, it'll pick up two thousand feet, two thousand pounds at straight horizontal. That's crazy. Yep. I mean, there's cranes really that have a hard time doing that. You yeah, know, when they're straight the flat out yeah. like that. I can pick up two thousand pounds. That's a lot. So yeah. yeah, so this crane truck that he's got, it's a big semi and it's got the crane crane on it, <clears throat> and he sits in a seat and his he'll just go up there with a the boom and it's got a saw on it. Yep. So he yeah. grabs a hold of the tree with like a grapple, and then the saw just comes through and cuts the tree. And then he just brings it down. I mean, you're literally just sitting there picking limbs off the tree, pick, take the trunk, and then yep. cut the I've trunk got off. A, <clears throat> on the top of the chassis, we've got a, a headache rack where you can stand up above the chair, stand or sit. And I've got a reclining uh, a reclining seat mm-hmm. to sit up there and just so run the remote. Up. Yeah. Right. Just, you know, sit there. The other day I sat there for about six hours just straight sitting, just, just running up. that remote. And then, do you when you guys take that apart, take trees down like that? What do you do with all the debris? Do you have a certain spot you take it, or it just you... depends on where we're at? The closest place is definitely the best. Um, right. We have several locations. Luckily, we've built a you know kind of clientele that a lot of people like that stuff, either the mulch or the logs, the wood. So a lot of right. people will take it. But just yesterday, we cut one thirty-six inch diameter walnut and one thirty-inch walnut. We took that back to the house. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Those were nice walnut trees. I bet. Yeah. I went, speaking of walnut, not to get off topic too far, I went to a customer's house one time. I was building a pond, and I was looking down at his field line, and it was just all black walnut, and they were all mature mm. and straight and huge. And I was looking, and I had to investigate because, you know, they stand out. their leaves and whatnot. They're like a different color, mm-hmm. even like a neon green or something. And I took off walking down through that wood line, and I counted like a hundred big black walnuts. I told the customer, I was like, dude, you're sitting on a gold mine back here. It was down by Lake Egypt. Wow. And he was like, oh, yeah, I like those trees, you know. And I'm like, well, I've been cutting the hell out of them. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> it's <kidding>. time. <laughs> it's time to send those little piggies to market. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, black walnut is very valuable, especially if you can find the right, you know, yeah. furniture maker. That's that is the right buyer. It. Yep. Yep, that is. So they've got this truck, like you said, it's helping your back, and then you guys chip. I'm assuming most of your yep, all the brush. Got a big chipper it. now, and now we got a mini skid steer that just you know once the grapple saw will get it on the ground, the mini picks it up, puts it right into the chipper. So right. unless it's really little, you know our guys don't touch it. So we then- try to take the hard labor out of it so when they pull up to my house and see this big dead ash they're not going to be very happy (laughs) no no, they never like the dead ash trees no but we um and even on the front of our skid steer our mini skid we seen another group working and they've got like a six foot steel bristle brush Mm -hmm. and it's like taking a yard break off one pass, but six foot wide. So he puts it like at the bu- bucket yeah, attachment. So my, my uh, yeah, my grapple will grab onto it, and then you just rake uh, it straight back, and right. you can back drag stuff. Just clean area. And, oh man, and it does even great for prepping dirt. You know, like finishing right. up dirt, grading. Yeah. And it's six foot wide. That's big. Yeah, but we just we just stopped in and watched another group work. We seen a group working, and it was a nice outfit. And we're like, hey, let's watch these guys. And then we seen this brush, and we're like. And so then by then I was like, let's go talk to these guys. Right. And I made a new contact. <clears throat> Since then I've worked for them with yeah. my crane and all just because I seen this little thing they were. That's a good them. point. Like you saw something and then you went and made the connect contact connection with them. And yeah. usually that's all it takes. If you're in the same business and you're friendly yeah. and you can, you know, carry a conversation with somebody, then you stop in. I've done the same thing as you just said and stopped in and talked to other guys and everybody's looking for help. They're like, yeah. damn, you got a truck, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can that you bring was. it over here? That was. Yeah. That so sure was. that works out. Where did you get your rake at? Uh, it's fr- it's made from grapple or a branch manager. Oh, it's okay. A brand. So it's a manufacturer. It's a manufacturer. Yep. And then I, and then it's just a straight broom and then you have to make your attachment to work for you. If right. you have a branch manager grapple, yeah, obviously it works perfect for that, but I don't. I've got another one, so I had to make it right. work for mine. But they make them now. I've seen them for uh, track hose. Yeah. Just pulling, you know. That's, that's cool. It's nice. It's it's good to look into the attachments 
Yeah. Like we've got some stuff. The uh, sheep's foot roller for the bobcat. It's worth its weight in gold. Yeah. It was an expensive attachment. I think new. They run like fifteen or when that was six years ago. They might be at twenty now, but they're worth every penny. Mm-hmm. Like if that thing breaks down, it gets fixed right away because yeah, th- it can't be down. We yeah. compact dirt with it. Yeah. And I used to use the bigger Ingersoll ran like in that picture, and I found that that Bobcat vibratory compactor was hitting the same numbers as this whole other machine. So I've always got the skid steer on the job usually, but yeah. you know, I was having to come back and get this roller and move it to a job. And I realized, so let's just try the attachment on the skid steer. So now we can throw that attachment on the trailer with another, t- the tiller attachment, mm-hmm. you know, and we, we'll, yeah. we'll dry out dirt tilling it or disking it and then we'll compact it. So there's a lot of attachments you can look into even these like con expos or whatever you know out in mm-hmm. vegas just stuff like that and you don't have to go i know it's too expensive to go but you can get on youtube and watch and lot. watch a lot of stuff i do it all the time i'll be on these websites and i'm like damn look at that attachment and i've i've messaged companies and inquired about getting attachments you know so some people i didn't go through with just because it was a pipe dream and i woke up the next morning <laughs> and i was like well ellie ain't gonna let me buy that but i messaged him at 11 o'clock last <laughs> night while i was laying in bed thinking it was a good idea to buy a new uh tilt bucket you know or something yeah <laughs> they message back i'm like yeah my bad i know i said i'd buy it but my wife said i can't <laughs> so financial department said yeah, no <laughs> that's denied yep yeah so i have to improve everything through ellie but um so what was your start in the tree service how did you go you were in college right did you uh yep you want to start all the way back at the beginning, or you want to talk about trees? No, we'll, we can start at uh, the beginning. So I got my start with um, my girlfriend at the time when I was in college. Her brother was a lineman, <clears throat> and um, like most linemen do on the side, they cut trees down. Right. Um, so he asked me one time, hey, would you like to help me um, cut these trees? And at that point, it was, you know, for me, it was just stacking brush. And that wasn't the best, but I got to watch him swinging from the tree, from the ropes. And I just thought, man, that is awesome. And you wanted to try. I did. So then, you know, eventually, and I worked for him for a couple summers, you know, you mm-hmm. know, hitting and miss. And so, and when I was growing up, the only way my dad and my grandpa and most of my family heated their houses with wood. So I cut lots and lots and lots of firewood. So on top of that, I was already used to working out and with the wood and stuff like that so when they were cutting trees it kind of just went hand in hand with what i'm used to mm-hmm. um but this was like a little more exciting swinging right. around the tree yeah you'd so, swing around like dars <laughs> yeah it looks like fun <laughs> oh it was so one thing led to another i you know started doing it on my own and people started calling me and um i i you know once I got into college, um, I kind of quit because it was taking all my time. Okay, so but, you were doing it before college. Even. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, my first tree I cut down was 16 years old. Really? I tied a rope around my belly and the chainsaw to it <laughs> and held on one hand and was cutting with the other. Right. I had my dad and my grandpa below me. Okay. And uh, But <laughs> I eventually learned, you know, the harness and you know right. ropes and safety and i had a scare one time and then i went to a training in st louis for about a month right. and learned a lot up there and that's what kind of kept me probably alive right yeah um, i watched you not to get to stop your uh story but i watched him because i don't know anything about you know trees taking them down the way that the an arborist does but all I know is dig around it and push it over the traco. Mm-hmm. And when you were setting up to take this tree down, because the way they do it is he'll tie, he'll go up and they'll take, oh, there's ropes all over. You know, he's, he's hanging onto a rope that he's suspended from for safety. <clears throat> but then he's got another big anchor rope around the base of the tree yeah. that you like. He, he went around and notched the base of the tree so it would hug in there yep. and not slide up yep. and then put this big anchor rope. And then... He would go up, climb up the tree with his chainsaw, and then he takes a rope, and they've got, you know, all these different techniques, which is why it's good to learn. Even from multiple people, you might learn from one guy. It's not going to hurt you to stop and learn from another guy because Mm -hmm. they might show you, hey, you can use these uh, quick attach, you know, loops on these limbs to lower them down instead of having a tie or, you know, whatever it is. But he was going up, and 
my first time being around a, a tree guy dropping it like that, it was crazy. Like you guys would tie off a limb, Nathaniel would cut it, and this thing would swing down and it would drop right in the pile, right where they wanted, and just <laughs> yeah. lay down like it was, like, you know, like it was just meant to just like a pillow sheet <laughs> or a bed sheet, you know, yeah. <laughs> as you lay it down. That's what we're shooting for. Yeah, it was impressive. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah but uh, so. You know, after college, you know, during college, <clears throat> I had too many other jobs, you know, um, working for lumber yards, stuff like that, that I wasn't able to get to the trees. Um, but I end up right around, I was getting out of college, I started getting more calls about it. People that had used me before, repeat customers calling back. And um, I, I kind of started figuring out that you could make some money at it. Um and you could make decent money out of it, but you're going to have to require, you're going to have to have some money invested. You're going to have to buy some chainsaws. You're going to have to buy some equipment, and none of it's cheap. But it all makes a big difference at the end of the day um, on how fast you get jobs done, how safe you get jobs done. So after, so really after I met you, I mean, I didn't know much about cutting trees either. Like I said, that's kind of when I was, I met Nathaniel when I was really starting to get going. I don't know if it was what year it was. I I wasn't too big myself. I just yeah. had a little old dump truck and a mm -hmm. mini, you know. Yep. And um, so I started buying saws because <clears throat> in clearing, I can push the trees over with the track hoe. I still got to process them to burn them mm -hmm. or get them out of there. So I started buying steel. I've had some really good luck with steel, and I've had some really bad luck with steel. I bought brand new ones. I bought like a 293, and all mine are smaller, like 20 inch bars. Yeah. But I bought one, and for a year, it was my first brand new chainsaw. It was like 400 bucks. I bought this thing, and it, right off the bat, I hit it with the tractor bucket. It <laughs> smashed the handle. That was the job you had me on. Was it? Yes. It's like the first day, wasn't you, it? You bought it, and you destroyed <laughs> <Yes>. it. <laughs> up there, and you were up there. Decoin. Yes, you did yes. come up there. I yes. came up there and helped first you knock day, some trees down. It I was so mangled. Dude, I, <laughs> I felt so terrible. We went to Ace Hardware. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go get me a chainsaw, because I had like some polling. Or yeah. some shitty little wow, chainsaw dang. that I got at a yard sale. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I needed some trees cut up, and obviously I had a 16-inch pole, and so I went and got that steel. Nathaniel comes, took down some trees, processed some trees for us, and uh, I bought that saw, and my brother was using it. He sat it down behind like a log or something, and I don't never had a saw, so I never thought to look out for it. And I <laughs> reached over and grabbed that log and just crunched it. Oh. <laughs> but then we fixed that. But then it wouldn't stay running. And um had carburetor issues. And for like a year, I'd take it in. They'd work on it. And I'd get it back. And they ended up giving me a brand new one. Steel really? did. They couldn't figure it out. Like, they had all these techs working on it. They gave me a brand new one. And then I think they let me keep the other one. And then I think I just had a new carburetor ordered and put it on there. Really? <laughs> yeah, they couldn't get that one going. And so I've got both saws. Yeah. And I bitched a lot, too. I mean, it's pretty bad. You get it back from service, and then you go out to use yeah. it, and you get to the job, and it starts and doesn't run, and you're like, oh, my gosh. So yeah. I'd come back in there bitching. I think they got tired of hearing me bitching. Yeah. So take a new saw and leave yeah. us alone. That's nice they did that. But, yeah, you were there. So, yeah, be careful with your tools because yeah. I bought one and smashed it, it the very first day. I've had them, I've dropped a brand new saw out of the tree. You got some nice ones. I like yeah. your little short ones that yes. you go up climbing with. You have to have them. A D Those limber. Dangerous. Right. Dangerous. But, yeah, having the right tools for the job is huge. Yeah. Um, we, we carry more saws than probably anybody else out there, um, around us at least. But, you know, if if one breaks down, I mean, you know, you, you Grab can't just have one. one. Yeah. You know, like you it, can't go working on it for half a day. You no. need another one, and then right when on. you get home from work, try yeah. to figure it yeah. out. Yeah. So we got <laughs> it set up now where one day a week, both of my guys, my full time guys, come in and just do straight up maintenance on every saw, every piece of equipment, every week. Nice. And because most of our stuff has to be greased either eight or forty hours, mm -hmm. so we either do it daily or weekly, mm -hmm. and man, things. It's not I mean, a bad idea because you yeah. know if not, then it might it just not gets, get done. Exactly, and it then just you'll gets have neglected. A bunch of stuff that's not running. <clears throat> yeah, we had the mini shut down because it went seven days without air filter clean because they didn't, didn't they forgot to do it and it just shut down. It just wouldn't right. get enough air. 
Right. I was like, have you guys checked the air filter? Like, that ain't going to do it. Radiators on those things, yeah. man. Those minis, they got, they'll have a radiator and then your hydraulic cooler and a bunch they of, do. looks like a bunch of radiators stacked up and they'll get leaves. And in your case, I bet wood chips and sawdust oh, probably dust. sucks yes, right up in there. It does. <clears throat> and, um, so you got to make sure you clean those out because I've had that happen too. I've loaded it up and taken it to the shop. And they're like, well, look between there. And I look between there. I'm loaded it back on my trailer. I was like, I'll bring it back if I can't figure it out. <laughs> I didn't even think to look in between those two things. But, yeah, there are a lot of learning curves. You learn them as you go. It is. A guy that's uh, local to here had a brand-new stump grinder, uh, eight months old, and it blew the engine. And uh, he went back to the factory, and they told him they weren't going to warranty anything um, because the it was neglect. Right. Yep, they said that it was low oil and the air filter had never been cleaned. So if you blow your shit up, clean it. What you need to do is get your air filter out, clean, clean the hell out of it. Go get a brand new one, put it in there, <laughs> yeah. and uh, make sure it's all right because they will deny a claim. For, they denied it, and that was yeah. big money. Yeah, I, I can't believe that they denied it, but I guess it was that bad. Right, that they did. Which <clears throat> it happens everywhere. Like there's certain. Filters people forget about or mm-hmm. grease fittings. My dozer's got a certain grease fitting up under the tracks that yeah. like nobody knows is there and they're always neglected. You know, on those John Deere's, you grease that crossbar in the center of the tracks under the cab. Nobody ever does it. So when you go to put grease in one, it won't take it. it. Won't take yeah. It. But, um, and it's pretty expensive to fix. Yeah. We just got the quote on it the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I told them, I'm like, which I love the guys that are fixing it. But I'm like, hey, look it over. Let me know what it needs, you know. And they sent me the bill. And I was looking it over. And I'm like, rubber window bushings. It was like rear motor for the windshield wiper. I'm like, I've never in my life used the w- rear windshield wiper in a dozer. <laughs> like, yeah. Cross that off the list for 1300 <laughs> I'll just get out with my squeegee and yeah. squeegee it off. I got to see that bad. But, um, yeah, make sure you're maintaining your stuff. It saves you in the long run. It does. I went through the growing pains <clears throat> of having equipment and not taking care of it and then sitting out on the job for a day, half a day, once a week, having to fix stuff. You know, you get going and then something else breaks or this hose breaks and it was part of starting out and going from what I could afford at the time. I mean, I could just forge shit that somebody else had already wore out, mm-hmm. you know. So, but it is nicer getting the you know better equipment. <clears throat> I'm not a fan of brand new personally. Yeah, I, I'll let somebody else take that depreciation hit coming off the lot, and yeah. then I'll buy it a year or two old. Even yeah. I'll buy it at a thousand hours compared to brand new. But take care of your stuff. Maintaining the oil, all that stuff, air filters. Yeah, but as as well as maintaining your equipment, you've also got to maintain your stress level and your health when you're running a business. <clears throat> um, Nathaniel and I were talking before the show, and I've never had a panic attack until I was probably 35. Mm-hmm. And that's crazy. I didn't know what anxi- anxiety was until I was 35. Yep. And uh, it's not social, none of that. It's business I don't know what you would call it. It's, it's business related. Um, usually it's financial related, but most of the time it's all made up for me what yeah. happened. And I don't know what happened, but like I started off with, you know, we do, we'd get big jobs. It might even be a good thing. I might get word that I got a huge job and all of a sudden start stressing the hell out. Like, mm-hmm. okay, now what the hell do I do? How am I going to do it? Yeah. And be up at night and just me and my wife have both been in this position and we'll alternate. It's crazy because, like, we'll alternate nights if it's real bad and we're going through something. Like, one night she's stressing out. Oh, this and that. This is so bad. You know, I'm like, it's fine. I'm like, don't worry about it. We'll be good. She's stressing. Then a couple days later, (laughs) she's good. And I'm like, I'm stressing out here. But one time with me, I was working. And I think I started to tell the story in another episode, but I didn't finish it. But we had this D6 in. And I, I was doing a big commercial job. I had trucks lined up. Not like this picture, but similar. You know, when there's trucks lined up, there's money on the line because if you're not moving dirt, then you're costing, you know, if you're broke down. And I just spent like 18 grand on 
the parts and then we fixed some cylinders while we had the tracks off and it got up to about 28 to 30,000 to fix the tracks. Well, while I was doing pricing that, I did price a transmission or remanufacture just in case so I'd know. And uh I knew it was around 30 another 30 grand. Like, damn, don't want to deal with that for a long time, but I did look into it. So now it's in my head that maybe a transmission's 30 grand. <clears throat> so I'm working I'm pushing dirt and I'm going up a slope kind of at an angle. And as I'm going up, all of a sudden this dozer just bam, something breaks loose and it won't steer. It would keep tracking forward or backward, but it wouldn't do nothing with the steering. And instantly in my mind, I just priced that transmission. Oh. It was my algorithm fucking with me because it like <laughs> showed me that. And then all of a sudden, bam, this breaks. And I got it up to where it was like on flat ground because I was on a pretty steep hill. I got it up straight up to where I was on flat ground. And all of a sudden, I st- that's what went into my mind was, oh, shit, you just spent 30 and you ain't got another 30. It was hard to get that 30. Mm-hmm. And now you just broke another 30 and you got trucks lined up. I got out of there. Let's see. I left the dozer running because I didn't think nothing but like transmission. I thought something snapped in the transmission. I got out of that dozer. And as I was going to tell the truck driver, just go on the fuck home because something bad just broke. Um, I just, everything, it was like whenever I used to do nitrous. It was just like that as like a college party or whatever or air duster that everything started going wah, wah, wah. And like my vision got blurry and fucked up and I, I was falling out. Like I'd never been in this position before. I was just so stressed out thinking that I just broke something else that this expensive, that my body decided it was time to freak out and fucking fall out on the ground. (laughs) And I got to the back of the dozer and I went down, I went down to my knees and like, I'm pretty good. Even if I'm drunk or something, I can put one foot in front of the fucking other. But at this point I couldn't no more. It just, I lost everything. I go down. I couldn't see my vision was all messed up. And when I did calm down, probably like 30 seconds later or something, you know, It was funny, there was a sheep's foot roller on the other side of the dozer, so there's this big compact machine, this guy on it, and it's going, and as I fell out, I can hear this thing, and I'm thinking in my head, shit, am I out of the path of that thing, you know, and I knew I'd went around, and it's funny, this is what I'm thinking about, like, I'm I'm in survival mode in my head. Yeah. Because I can hear this roller going back and forth, and I'm thinking, where am I passed out right now? And I knew I'd made it around the back of the tracks, and I was right at, behind the dozer. I'm like, okay, I shouldn't be in his way, but I also didn't want the guy to see me because I'm all, I'm fucking flopping like a fish over here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? I don't know. Fucking shit just broke. <laughs> so I'm back here. I can't see. So I'm on my hands and knees, and I can hear this thing going back and forth on the other side of the dozer and as my vision comes back i got my hands on the dirt and i start seeing hydraulic oil running down mm. and going between my fingers and i'm like oh my gosh I, and i didn't know hydraulic transmission i didn't know what kind of oil it was but i just seen all this oil and i knew something broke underneath i'm like oh so the engine was still running i'm like shit i hadn't made it to the truck driver I'd been laying on the ground, flopping around, you know? So I'm like, I need to get the dozer shut off in case it's something else. I don't know what's going on. So I go back around to the front of the tracks and again, I went down. So my health, my stress level is too high. Mm -hmm. I get up in the track O or the dozer and I call my brother and I'm like, get over here. I'm like flopping around. I might need an ambulance, you know, something's not good. And he comes racing over. And by the time he got there, I'd calm down a little bit. And he's like, what the fuck's wrong? I don't know, dude. I just like went to tell the truck driver and I fell out. Yeah. Like it's not normal. It's not something I would ever done before. And uh <clears throat> it ended up so I let that I let my mind think that it was gonna be a thirty thousand dollar fix when in reality we had that hose fixed in two hours. It was a hydraulic hose for the main steering mm. on that dozer. We we got under it, dropped the belly pan. I got some good pictures I'll pop up here because it was right next to – you can see what kind of job I was at. I had a, the smoke tower at the power plant right next to the dozer. Oh. I'm fucking stressing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm down here at a power plant, and my shit just is pouring oil out. So I'm going to fall out and flop around for a minute. <laughs> Give me 30 seconds me and I'll be back with you and I'll yeah. get this thing fixed and out of here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll throw up some pictures of that night. So it's 
it was at, towards the end of the day. Luckily, we got the mechanic in my brother that he is, and we got under there. We pulled the belly pan off. Bam, there's a huge hydraulic line. <clears throat> we ran to the store, got a new one, got it fixed. Next day, we're back up and running. And I got home, and I'm thinking, I could have had an aneurysm or something over a fucking $200 hose. Mm-hmm. Like, I got to calm down. Yep. You know what I mean? It's not the end of the world. Even if it was a $30,000 transmission, I'm going to figure it out. I just got to quit stressing. <laughs> yep. So I've gotten better in the last few years. Um, I've gotten better with maintaining equipment, gotten better with getting better equipment, and gotten better, you know, in a financial position to where I'm not going to freaking flop around if something <laughs> breaks. So there's just, you got to take care of your equipment and take care of your body, all that in this, like you were saying with your truck, how you're saving your body. I mean, think, think about long term. If this is a career or a path you want to take, you know, how are you going to make it to where you can last and then enjoy your retirement? Yeah. So yeah, maintain your equipment, maintain your, your body if you want to last in any trade you know try to find the ways to do it if you can use a machine to do it do it you know your arms and legs are only made for so much Mm -hmm. beating on but uh, another thing we talked about so you have a relationship what's your relationship with all that you're a plumber you're a plumber on top of a tree service right so you know you're a journeyman plumber, right? Yep, journeyman pipe fitter. Pipe fitter. Um, plumber, pipe fitter, we're all the same. Oh, so we've done. got pile drivers, pipe fitters. <laughs> we got it all on here. <laughs> That's yep. good, though. So you also are, is it a union? Yep. Union, journeyman, pipe fitter. Yep. Plumber. And Gosh. what kind of, is it, that's not residential. So when I think plumbing, I think, you know, running lines or. Yeah. <clears throat> so your plumbing might be like piping for nitrogen or who knows what, yep. stuff like that. So, and I actually don't really do either plumbing or pipe fitting. I work on commercial and industrial heat and air. So That's, I got into this special niche in the plumbers and pipe fitters because I've got a weak stomach and I'm not, I'm not a plumber. Right. Uh, but I've learned um, through time, heat and air. And that's where I kind of found my fit in, in the plumbers and pipe fitters. Right. Okay. So yeah. you so we were talking before the show, and uh, Nathaniel's worked for a company called Honeywell before, which everybody's heard of. I've worked at their facility, you know, and it's usually through subs or through third parties or whatever. I've never actually worked for Honeywell, but I've worked for, you know, people, contractors going into their plant. And it is an interesting place. I don't want to say too much about it, but like they they will give you a full ass screen when you go in there, and they've got mm-hmm. some serious security. I went in there with a crane down to the plant south of here, <clears throat> and I just gotten out of prison. And I go in there with this crane. I'm a crane operator, and they call for a crane, and I go down there, and they've got a guard shack, and they do the radiation check on everything, you know. Let me think. I, I'd have to put on a suit and all yep. that. Yep. Put on a whole ass suit and boots and everything. And boots, covers. Have to wear, yeah, have to wear a whole suit suit up. I'd go in there, and I'm working, but I didn't have the, like, you if you, you can get a certain badge where then you don't have to have a guard follow oh, you yeah, around. I had to have escort. I had to have escort. And they were like, oh, well, you do a background check. You don't have to have escort. And I'm like, I just got out of fucking prison. So good luck yeah. on that. Just send your guard with me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only going to be here for two weeks. <laughs> but this dude would literally follow me for eight hours a day, 12, 10, whatever we are working. And our whole group. So we would go work in the back, and we were building like a nitrogen tanker or something like that, some cradles for it. And there would be a guard there. <clears throat> and I'm – if I'm correct, it might have been an arm guard. Like Oh, they are, yeah, definitely. They were arm guards. Yep. And uh <clears throat> like if I had to use the bathroom, all five of us or six of us would all go to the bathroom with <laughs> the escort. Yeah. And then I would go in the bathroom and there would be like five stalls, right? So all six of us would go in the bathroom and those five would wait with the guard while I went in the stall and pissed and I'd come out, maybe <laughs> like where the sinks are, you know, I'd watch <laughs> yeah. my hands, we'd all walk back. Like we couldn't, I couldn't go to the bathroom yep. and then stay there. So we'd all just take a piss break at the same time. It's so serious because of what they make and it's, it is nuclear and, um, you know, to get a green badge, not only for 
not only do you have to have no you know criminal history but even debt if you have credit card debt you cannot really? get a badge there they think you can be bought um, so they're the only place in the United States of America that does what they do. They take that, you know, uh, uranium, natural uranium out of, you know, dirt pretty much and refine it into this UF6. It's a gas. And therefore it can either, it leaves there and either goes into, um, you can enrich it, which they used to do in USEC right across the river for mm -hmm. bomb grade stuff right. or for natural fuel for like fuel rods. Right. Power plants, and that's n normally what it goes for. The craziest shit you'll see at this place, like they've got a boneyard of just brand new trucks, cranes, whatever. So if a contractor comes in there with a piece of equipment, and then when he leaves with that piece of equipment, they'll do oil samples. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they go all the way through the equipment, and if it fails an oil sample, it goes to the boneyard. They'll buy it. Whatever the hell they do. I don't know. I've never been in that process, yeah. but the contractor don't take his crane out of there. No. He goes out to the backfield. They've got a whole field of shit. I've seen the last crawler crane that come in. Um, they bought them all new tracks. Yeah. Yep. That's expensive. Oh, they bought them all new tracks for his, for it. Yeah. They done it to me. Um, I was using wood cribbing and stuff, you know, my mm -hmm. cribbing's pushing down in the dirt. Oh, <clears> yeah. <throat> They uh they took my Caribbean and didn't want me to have it. Yep. And I don't know if you'd even want to, thinking that. No, they you wouldn't want them. They, uh, they took my blocks. Like, as you go out, they'll run a wand over, or I don't know what the hell they Geiger had. Geiger counter, a, Geiger counter. Yeah, Geiger yeah. counter. And they would go over the whole track o or the crane with this thing. I would wait inside, and I'd be looking out, and it would be like going through the border. You know yeah. what I mean? It'd be yeah. like they had your vehicle pulled over, and there would be three or four guys going through shit. Like I said, air samples or oil samples, air filters are checking all that stuff, and uh, as well as your personal body. So I would come out of there. You take off your clothes, and this is most hazmat-type stuff, but you take off your clothes, but they had the Geiger counter – Yep. For your hands, like you'd put hands your hands and down, feet. hands and feet, because yep. I guess that's where the radiation would come out at. Name touching stuff, stepping on things. Right. It's a trippy place to work to know that. But I mean, there was people that had been there forty years and they looked fine to me. Yeah. So did you have to pee in a cup too? Um, I'm sure I probably yeah, did. We had, I had to yeah. pee in a cup twice, uh, twice a month. Okay, I'm yep. sure and I they, did. I remember having were, to do computer stuff for like two days yeah, yep. just onboarding. to even get going. Yeah, yep. The onboarding is quite a bit. Yeah, we were only going to be there for like two weeks, and we had to do two days of computer, yeah. and then, uh, like you said, probably had to do the piss test. And Yep, it's a secure facility. It is. I mean, it's. I've been in a lot of prisons working through the plumbers, pipe fitters, and it's way more secure yeah. than than. Yeah, the prisons have prison. got rubber bullets. The fucking yeah. Honeywell's got them they, ARs, they really <laughs> them MP5s it, and yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they closed the one down here. Did they open it back it, up? It's open back up now. Stop. Yep. Did it really? Yep. I have an apprentice down there now. Wow. So yeah, they closed that a few years. Ago, I thought back. Yeah, they five. idled it. Yep. I idled it down, and yep. I was thinking, man, what's going to happen now? Because it's you got a big factory like that. Yeah, 66 acres in the fence. 66 acres, and you know there's got to be some contaminated dirt. So I was thinking uh -huh. it was going to be a big environmental. But no, they just start back up and go, which yep. they had some trippy shit. Like I was working next to some big nitrogen tanks and stuff, you know, and I'm like, man, yeah. I don't want to hit that thing with my counterweight. Yeah, a lot of stuff like that down there. I've got another story. I was working with this company one time at um, uh, Dupo, Dupont, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm working with this company. I'm not going to say who this company was, but I was working with this company. They call me and they're like, hey, can you come over here and shear off this tank? And I'm like, yeah. So I get a traco with the shear. I go to the, I'm like, all right, I'll go up in here. I go up in this big factory. And this other company's got their guys there, too. They just want me to come. And what they've got is this big, like, I don't know, multi-thousand gallon, probably like 30,000 gallon tank. I don't know what they are. But they're like on those concrete cradles, those big metal tanks, you know. Mm -hmm. And it had this, like, product in it that it mixed and it did its reaction in the tank, which it wasn't supposed to do. Like, the product's supposed oh. to go in. They make something, whatever, at the Dupo plant. Or if I'm even saying that right, Dupont. But it had solidified in the tank. So 
the tank was like halfway full and it looked like screwdriver handle, like a yellow screwdriver, those old plastic ones, you know, like it was, you could chip it out and it was like hard plastic. And they're like, yeah, we just want to cut the top off where it's not solidified so we can get in there and chip that shit out. <clears throat> and I'm like, all right. So I shear it off. I go with the shear and I take the top off of it. But when you do that with a track on a shear, it's going to leave sharp edges and shit, you know, it's mm -hmm. not going to be like a torch. And, uh, and I'm thinking in my head, like I'm shearing it for the fact that we can't burn because it's plastic and you know, yeah. that's why we're shearing it. So I get done shearing it and these laborers, and I don't know if it was from the plant or where, but they come over and they're like, Hey, we're going to torch those edges off there. Well, whoever the fuck it was, sound like a competent person, you know. <laughs> I'm just here to shear the top off. I was like, I don't give a shit what y'all do with it after I'm done. You know, I thought it was theirs, and there you go. It's opened up. Do what you want with it. And they're like, we're going to torch that off. And I'm whatever. And uh, they go to start torching on it. They go grab their torches real quick and come back. And psh, and it right about the time it crossed my mind, I was watching from the Traco, and these two guys were torching on it, and they were torching from the outside, and all those sparks were going in on that plastic shit. And I, and they had some fire blankets in there, you know, but not near enough. They had like one or two, and it was like yeah. a big area. And as they were doing it, I was watching them sparks, and I thought, well, I wonder why they ain't torching it from the inside out, so they ain't doing that. And all of a sudden, I seen it on fire. And I thought, oh, shit. So I, and we we're right next to a nitrogen tank, oh, big old nitrogen tank. Shit. And this thing's fucking on fire. This is funny <laughs> shit. This is the shit I get myself into. So I'm looking, and all of a sudden, this tank's on fire. And I said, hey, I said, you see that on fire? I think, in my mind, I think they're just going to grab their fire blanket and, like, knock it out. I'm like, that's on fire. But they're still down on the ground or down this way, torching up into it. And I'm up higher so I can see that it's on fire. I'm like, that thing's burning. I get out. I go over get a fire extinguisher out of the truck or out of the track or wherever I got out and got a fire extinguisher. And by the time I turned around to it, this fucking was thing blank. was just black smoke. Oh. I mean, it was rolling, right? And I'm like, oh, shit, we're fucked. Like, this is bad. <laughs> Dude, there was a helicopter. Yeah, so it was bad. So um, whew, black smoke's rolling up. I run up with this fire extinguisher, and I'm right next to an nitrogen tank. And I'm psh, like, fucking throw the fire extinguisher. <laughs> yeah, that Dude, hurt. about that time, the fucking sprinkler system on this whole boy had come oh. on. <laughs> Shit, the whole spare sprinkler, inside and outside, like it goes off. I'm like, holy fuck. Um, I'm calling 911. Like this shit's bad, you know. So that I get off phone, then them or whoever, maybe one of the other guys called 911. I was hired by another company to come share this off. That guy had left right before this, so I called them. Oh. I didn't know who to call. You know, I didn't even know anybody in the plant. It yeah. was their job. Yeah, I was just there to share it off. Uh, I didn't have a contact. I had the contact the guy that hired me, so I called him. And he's like, hey, buddy, what's going on? <laughs> and this thing's fucking rolling. <laughs> no. At this point, there's like 14 fire trucks rolling in, you know. The whole plant's fucking water system's going off. And I called the guy, and he's like, hey, buddy, how's it going? And I said, I looked up. I said, it's bad. And I looked up, and there's a fucking news channel 5 helicopter right above me, sitting there circling oh. around filming. And I'm looking up at all this black smoke, and this whole fucking tank's on fire at this big plant. And I call him. He's like, hey, buddy, how's it going? I was like, it's bad, dude. It's real bad. I was like, the whole fucking thing's on fire. And he, he like, laughed. He's like, yeah. He's like, no, man, really, how's it going? I was like, no, dude. It's bad. Like I like I think I got him on the record or whatever and showed him the helicopter and it was flying over. I said it's on fire. He was like, Holy fuck. I was like, Yeah, but it was there, guys. So fuck it's their tank, you know. Yeah. We were just opening it up for him. It was it didn't fall on none of us. I mean, luckily it was like the plant guys or whatever Holy. that had uh caught it on fire. <laughs> But yeah, I'm sitting here fucking at this big plant, sprinklers going off, black smoke, just the whole sky's filling, you know, because it was plastic. It was yeah. just, and it was flaming. And when I looked up, I could hear it. And I'm on the phone 
And I looked up and I seen the helicopter. I'm like, God, no way. And oh I looked at God. it and it said new something. And I was oh. like, dude, we're <laughs> fucked. <laughs> I, I'm going home, man. <laughs> this tractor was a rental. I'm going to come, 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 come pick their shit up. I'm out of here. Yeah. Things you get into. I don't know how I got on that story, but some of them big plants. Shit happens. I mean, you yeah. got a bunch of guys that are humans. They came out. They made a mistake. They cut it the wrong way. I mean, what we like to say is if we see something, we say something. Yeah. The job I'm on now, they say it every day. If you see something, it's a good point. But the problem was is about the time I was seeing it is the time it was registering what was going on. Like, yeah. I was watching it, and I'm thinking in my head, like, they know what they're doing. And I don't know much about torching, you know. But I did know enough about fire that yeah. about the time it registered is about the time I seen it on fire. Oh. So uh, I didn't have time to say nothing. It just but if you see something going on like that, stop it because that's how shit goes wrong quick, real quick. Um, that's how you're on the news at five o'clock. Oh, you don't want to be that guy, <laughs> yeah. farmer from the Midwest over here to do bomb plant, <laughs> like just trying to make a name for himself. Yeah. <laughs> that's not the way I was looking. <laughs> Luckily, no. my truck was parked out front, not right there next <laughs> yeah. to the tank. God, thank God that I tracked like that traco in from right outside. next to May excavating. Yeah, oh. thank God I had to track it in from their, you know, lay down yard outside. But uh, yeah, so interesting place that you worked at that I've worked at. Um, you definitely worked there more. I was just there for a couple of weeks. But you get into these different places that, as an everyday citizen, you don't even think about. Or realize, like, the place by us, it wouldn't even cross my mind if I'd never went in there. But once you go in there, you're like, what the fuck is this hidden secret yeah. that I would have never known about? Yeah. Crazy stuff happening down here. All the time. <clears throat> it's... it's interesting. So we're going to have Nathaniel back, hopefully this week, to take down a couple ash borer trees for us. They're, uh, they've taken over. Pretty much America, right? Yeah. Is there no yep. more ash trees? They're all from, especially around the Midwest, that that and uh, elm. Emerald mm -hmm. ash borer has been taking the ashes down, and there's a Dutch elm disease that Damn, dude, both that's those like species. Our, half of our trees are yeah. ash. Yep, ash yeah. and elms. It uh, Ashes are really, <clears throat> and Carbondale are really, really, it's, you know, put a real hurting on them. And even right here where we're at, you know. Still. Our tree out front was beautiful. That was a big tree. Yeah. When it was alive when we first bought this house that tree was a full blooming tree and now yeah. it looks like a skeleton it's... out there yeah and just a couple of years yeah i see the first year <clears throat> half the tree was still green and the other half was dead yeah and i told myself like come on baby you can do yeah. it once it does that no it's dead yeah, it is it's dead. <clears throat> and now it's Every storm, my 14-year-old's out there having to pick, pick up big stuff. old chunks of tree, yeah. and I keep thinking, like, eventually it's going to get down to just a small tree, but no. No. It just keeps One dropping stick at a time. shit. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yep. Well, Nathaniel, we appreciate you coming on. It's good to learn about your trade. It's good yeah. to learn about Clearview Tree Service out of DeSoto. Nathaniel White's the owner. If you need any trees cut down, very professional. That was what drew me to him after I met him was how professional they were how put together their company was and really in southern illinois you're you're it i don't know any other person that has a setup like you do or even close yeah like that's the shit i mean he comes pulling up this truck and you'll see this picture this thing's like massive like the first time i seen the picture i'm like what the fuck is this <laughs> i've never even seen something like that you know so it's yeah. impressive Thanks for having us on. We appreciate the opportunity and look yep. forward to coming back sometime. All right, Nathaniel. Thank you. Yep, thank you. All right, guys. Reckless success. We'll see you next week. Have a good time. Later. All right, guys. We're going to wrap up. You can follow us on TikTok and YouTube at reckless.success. Instagram at reckless success. We're on Spotify and all major podcast services. Hit that subscribe button, please. For more information on May Excavating, check out our website or TikTok. That's a wrap. Thanks.